Hey, this is Kev from Blender Binge. In this video, we're going to go over basic rendering and how to create an image out of Blender. Ready? Let's go. The first thing we're going to need to do is have something to render. So, let's create a grid. And I'll just say radius. I'll fill the frame here. And I'll create a torus. They're interesting. So now I have a torus. And I want to, usually when I'm rendering, I like to look through the camera. Okay? Because that gives me control. So I'm just going to select the camera, right click the camera, and then I'm going to hit zero on the number pad on the keyboard. Okay? Most keyboards have a number pad on it. Hit zero. And now I'm looking through the camera at my view. If you watched the view on if you watched the video on cameras, you'll see that uh if I move around, okay, I'm now out of the view of the camera. So really quickly, okay, if I'm back in the camera view by hitting zero, you can see I'm looking through the camera. Okay, here's this blue line here. I'm gonna hit this little plus icon over here. And I'm just going to scroll down and I'm gonna hit lock camera to view. Now if I move around I'm holding the camera. So I'm going to find a decent looking place to render. Okay. And that's fine. And now I'm going to go over here, okay, under this camera. And all you have to do, just by default, is hit render. And it will start drawing this picture okay it'll start drawing what your camera sees in my case I'm seeing a big gray flat plane with a big gray donut thingy on it and your computer will go faster or slower depending on the speed of your of your graphics card okay so that's that's my image when I want to save it I can just go to save or image down here all right this little image button and I can just say save a copy or save as image okay and I can just hit that save put it anywhere on my computer I want and that's my image so that's pretty self-explanatory at this point now I want to go over how to make this look better so once this renders okay and it renders in this view you can change that by changing display image editor and you can say new window and then when this renders it'll it'll pop up a new window and you'll see that render in a new window okay I'm not I'm not gonna do that now because it's gonna make this video a little bit longer than I wanted but you you have options so now if we want to go back to our scene okay you, you can realize you try clicking around in here and it does nothing but move this around alright you just go back here and right now we're in UV image editor okay when you render it switches over to here just switch it back to 3d view that's all you have to do and you're back in your scene okay so it lives over here when you render it switches here when you want to get back to working go to 3d view and you're back so now we can just add some materials alright so I can go ahead and I can change from gray to I don't know go over here to this little little uh, icon okay and you just hit new and it gives a new material diffuse and it just gives it a white material and now you can see down here you have these nodes all right and I'm gonna do a whole video on nodes as well but this is just for rendering for getting an image out of blender so I can go here to my torus I can select it by right-clicking and I can hit new and I can make this whatever I want so I'll just go ahead and make it a different color. I'll leave it at diffuse for now and make it a different color just so things render fast. All right. So I'll make it a, I don't know, I like blue. I'll make it blue. All right. And now if I hit render, go back to this little camera icon and I hit render here. Right. I'm going to pause the video and wait for it to render. Okay, so I finished rendering and now I have it's still a relatively gray backdrop and I have this teal or blue donut thingy 
So underneath render, we have a bunch of settings here. All right, we have resolution, which by default right now is giving me half of HD, so 1920 by 1080. You can uh, increase that to 100%, and then you can you can type in whatever you want in here. And there are render presets too. Okay, so HD 720, 1080p, DVC Pro, um, Canvas, TV, and you can go in and, and you know just get whatever you want to render out at and it'll make those dimensions for you, okay? Aspect ratio, frame rate controls the animation, so we're not rendering animation yet, but when you do get ready for that, and I'm gonna cover at rendering animation, but you know what, I'll cover it here. If you wanna render animation, say you had, I'll go back to 3D view here, okay? And say I have some animation, so at keyframe one, okay, I'm gonna say location, keyframe, and then at frame, I don't know, whatever, 24, all right, one second. I'll pull this guy up a little bit. Instead of rendering a still image, I can say frame range. So I could say start frame one and say the last frame in here is 24. I can set this here to 24, hit enter. And now I only have these 24 I'll scroll in here with my mouse to show you. I have 24 frames. It's going to render 24 frames, start, range, start frame, end frame. And uh, you know, I probably could have showed you that in the last video too on, um, on F curves or curve editor, but that's okay. Okay, so you could set your frame range here too instead of down here. And you would just choose animation instead, and that'll render each frame, and it'll throw it into this temp directory. And you can you can click on this little icon here, and you can put it anywhere you want on the computer and it'll write out a series of those images all right and we'll get more into that as we do more animation stuff but for now this exists you can change it from PNG to TIFF HDR open EXR which is really cool okay when we start doing uh, like more advanced stuff I'll show you open EXR or open EXR multi-layer is phenomenal that lets you it lets you have a number of different layers and uh, a much higher bit depth to your image so when you bring it into compositing you have a lot more to play with it's kind of like camera raw where you have a lot more data in your image okay the, the files are huge but you can when you composite you can make it look a lot better but it gives you PNG by default and for most things that's okay and compression all right for PNG I usually whack the compression all the way to zero I just like to have you know PNGs without any compression all right, and then down here we have sampling. All right, so if you want final frame sampling presets, you just choose final. And for most things, this is okay. When we start rendering projects, I'm going to show you how we can really dial this in so that you can render faster. But just know that it's here, and you can change the look. And increasing these numbers increases render time, but it also makes your image look better. So there's a trade-off. All right, motion blur, you can add motion blur into your animation. So if you want cycles to write out motion blur and put it into your image already, you can have that. It renders slower. You can also do it with uh, pass later on. Um, that's a little bit beyond this video, but yes, it, it exists. So you, you can do quite a bit over here, okay, under motion blur. Choose that. Transparent, okay, this is the background. So if you have a background in here and you don't want that to render, you hit transparent and this area will be black. So I'm going to move my mouse, I'm going to move my, um, my view and I'll show you what I mean. So if it's not transparent and I hit render, okay, I'm going to go back here, scroll up and hit render. All right, I'll pause the video and then I'll show you what I mean. Okay, this finished rendering and you see I changed this back to 50% and I put it back on preview so it rendered faster. But you see here, you have the background, okay? If I go over here to these little icons here, and I say alpha, you see the whole frame is white, which means you're, you're not gonna have any, any alpha in this image, okay? You're not gonna have any, any open space. If you bring this into Photoshop, it's just gonna throw this on top of a layer, and this whole thing is gonna go above, on, on your layer, all right? There's Z, I'm not gonna concern myself with that right now, all right? So here's red, green, blue, all right, 
and the whole image here. Okay, color and alpha. So you see that the alpha, there's, there's no alpha. So this is going to come in, the background is going to come in with it. If you hit, go down here and you hit transparent, and I'm going to render this again. Okay, I'm going to hit render. I'm pause the video. Okay, this finished rendering. You can see that this is now the grid. Okay, it's a grid shape. If you go to alpha, you see it's cut out. So if you, if you were to save this as a PNG, and PNG saves alpha usually by default, you bring this into Photoshop, you can put this over another layer, and this will auto, this will be, this will be transparent. This will be cut out. So I usually always render, unless I want everything rendered, I usually always choose to set transparent here because I really only ever want to render the things I want to render. I, I don't usually want to render the background. All right. Unless I'm rendering the background and I want that specifically, I usually leave that out. So matter of preference, matter of what you're rendering, but usually I have this checked. Okay. And then down here we have performance. Okay. We have threads, number of threads you can control. Okay. Auto detect how many threads you have on your graphics card versus fixed. Um, how big your, those little squares are that you saw rendering. Okay. That's your tiles and you, a number of things you can play with. And we'll go definitely go more into this as we go over refining rendering and speeding up rendering. That's a, a far more advanced topic than I want to tackle in this video, but this exists. Okay, post-processing, there's compositing and there's the sequencer. Okay, Blender has a compositor and it has a sequencer. It's a video editor, so you can use both of these if you want later on. And bake, which we're not going to concern ourselves right now with, but you can you can bake lighting into things for video game environments and so on and so forth, and you can control a lot of that stuff here. And there's there's other places you can control it too, but that lives right here under render. So there's our image, and that's about it for rendering. And when you're done, you just go image, okay, save as image, and tell it wherever you want, okay, wherever you want to save it, you can save it. Or in the case of animation, it'll go to wherever you tell it to, and then you'll have a series of frames down there that you can then bring into uh, Adobe Premiere or or Blackmagic uh, DaVinci Resolve or Corel or Vegas or Blender or whatever you're using. Okay, so hopefully that helped give you a very basic rundown of rendering and how to save out an image. And again, if you got anything out of this video, please hit like. Subscribe, comment, tell people about it, shout out from the rooftops, tell no one, I don't, I don't know, whatever, and I'll just keep making more, alright? Thanks, talk to you later, bye.